everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Archetype. Uh, new day, same time, same channel. I had to make sure I remembered that one exactly the same. But yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the stream. If you're watching uh, later on YouTube or Twitch, hi. Welcome to the channel. Uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy this one. Uh, I wanted to catch everybody up on the progress of the character that I've been working on. So last character that we worked on was the caregiver in our archetype series. I'll show you briefly uh, where that is. I'll show you some work in progress files. I'll show you a little bit of how I got there um, and where to watch more if you want to know how I got there. But in general, uh, I'll get, catch everybody up on what we're doing. And then today we're actually going to start a new character. So we're going to be starting from scratch. That means we're going to be doing some 2D sketching, just kind of figuring out what we're actually doing. Uh, we're going to be doing some reference gathering and you, we're also going to start a 3D block out of the scene slash character. Uh, so in case nobody knows, the last character that I did, I actually rendered in Unreal 5, which is a very different process for me. I never used Unreal 5 before, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, check some of that out. I'm going to show you my screen real quick, and we're going to go to my art station. Uh, in case you've never seen my art station before, never been to art station, feel free to uh, take a look. And these are the two most recent characters that I've been doing for this series. Uh, in case you know nothing about me, feel free to check out my art station and you'll kind of get a glimpse of what I've done before. I uh, worked on a lot of Marvel movies and some uh, games like Uncharted and Star Citizen and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, let's jump into the characters. So the artist slash creator is the first one that I did. And this is the series, uh, the big, very first character of the series. And this one I actually rendered in Marmoset uh, Toolbag 4 and did some texturing in there as well. And it was pretty cool. Uh, I liked the experience of this, and this was kind of a fun thing to do, and this was the first one that I did. So now let's jump into two. This one I posted just recently, and so this is the caregiver. I will eventually create names for these characters so that they're not just the archetype name, um, but I'm still kind of unsure on what I want that to be, so we'll get there at some point. Um, but this is the first of the shots, so you can feel free to check out my art station. Uh, here if you want to go ahead and take a look at that you can also take a look at my Instagram uh, where I have posts for that as well and so you can kind of see a couple of the different uh, renders that I ended up getting I'm going to open up Photoshop right after this so we'll be able to see those again um, but this is kind of where we got to I see some people joining the chat here hello welcome everybody hopefully everybody's doing well so these are the, care the caregiver renders we got out of Unreal 5 there is some paint over on these. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you that all in Photoshop. But this is where we got to. It's kind of some fun world building using a lot of Nanite, a lot of Quixel, a lot of Mega Scans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so pretty happy with the progress or this character. What I liked about this one was it was very different than my previous one, right? The previous one was no basically no environment and it was just the character and this one i wanted the character to feel like a part of the environment so now we're going to jump into photoshop and i'll show you quickly some of that stuff so this is the renders uh in photoshop and i'm going to just kind of get this icon out of the way um show you a little bit what we got going on so i have all my layers over here on the bottom they're right behind my head and i'm going to move them right over my head so that you can take a look at them, but still kind of see the image. Uh, so this is all the renders, like I was saying, exactly what you just saw in ArtStation. I'm going to open up one of them or a couple of them so you can see what these folder structures look like. Uh, and that way you can kind of see a bit of what the raw render looked like and then what I got it to look like and how I did that. Uh, so this is a black and white fil filter. I use this quite a bit to uh, check my values. So I'll put this on these. I generally am a big fan of black and white images, so I often will keep these for myself, even though I don't post them. Most people don't seem to care about the, <laughs> them, uh, whereas they mostly want the, the colored one. So I'm going to turn all these layers off. And this is going to be the raw render. So this is what I got straight out of Unreal. Uh, it's definitely less impressive when you look at it without all the color correction and everything on it. Uh, but it is cool to note that with some relatively simple work uh, we get a nice a really nice image here so I'm gonna turn all this off and I'll show you quickly how I did it first I'm gonna put this in here this is basically I'm painting out you're gonna see what happens here that's because I decided to put a sky in here uh, this is just a simple image from Google search so I put it on uh, darker color I was fortunate that because of my composition uh, this is what the image looks like obviously without this here uh, but if I went to the different layer modes 
you'll see that when I went to darker color, it basically filled in the background pretty easily and I didn't have to do a ton to make it match. So I just drag and drop the sky, put it in there, and then I did some color correction. So you're gonna see this is me painting out the some of the elements that were looking a little odd here in the bottom. Uh, and then some curves. So I adjusted the curves on this so that it popped a little bit more, as well as some just more painting of integrating the environment. You can't really see that because it's behind the layer panel right here. And then the rest of this is just going to be a lot of color correction. So fixing that, making it stick out a little bit better, and then some curves to the overall image to brighten the saturation, uh, just some more curve corrections and some hue and saturations to just kind of give it the same look. And then I get into a little bit of painting. This one appears to have nothing on it, so I can probably just delete that layer. Uh, but here you can see some little birds appearing down in the bottom. These are just images from Google search of PNG. They're purely one color. And then an overlay image. This is basically going to be, I'll zoom in here. This is just going to be simple glows to the eyes. And then I'll zoom back out. Try to get it all in frame again, roughly where we were. And then they have some painting. All the painting is, you're going to see, is just some of the edge around the character, some of the vines that would be hanging off of the, the hands and all that stuff, the ropes kind of hanging in the armpits. And that's all that painting is. And then this is just a logo in the top right. So in reality, as far as what was done to the image, it was very little painting. This is all the painting off and on. So you can see it does make an impact, but it's not game changing to the image. And honestly, I'd say it didn't take me more than 15 minutes to do this painting. Note I did about eight images, so I didn't want to spend three to five hours on each render as far as painting, because uh, as you're saying, I see in the chat, um, you know, it's not that bad. So that, and then this is all the color correction. You can see the color correction and the sky edition are really what add a lot to the scene. Uh, let's pick out another one here. So I'm going to collapse this one. I named this one the protector. This is the overlook scene here. The overlook scene is going to be very similar, so you're going to see me put in some clouds and some layers. Uh, I'm going to show you what the actual scene looks like, the raw render. So this is that black and white layer that I like to use to kind of check my values and make sure that things are looking good. And then I'll turn everything off, which should be the raw render right here. So again, the difference between that is decent. There's definitely a, a big difference here, uh, but the actual work that it takes to go from one to the other is not that bad. I do very little to no color correction in Unreal. So that's part of why you're seeing so much here. And I think if you probably just turned off these color correction nodes, it wouldn't be as big of a change. So let's, let's break this down real quick. Uh, first, we're gonna add in some clouds you can see on the left there's no the haze that comes in unreal and the fog that comes in is actually really really great um but it, i wasn't able to figure out how to do the volumetric clouds at the distance where it felt like the character could be at a level where they were standing above the clouds so i added those in just with some photos and that's all you're going to see here is just atmosphere with a bunch of photos of, of clouds then i'm going to Go ahead and toss in a color correction and some curves. You'll see this curves layer right here is the one that's giving the biggest impact. And then some dialing down of the hue and the saturation is what's going on here. Somebody's asking what software I did for modeling the landscapes. That was going to be all Unreal 5's mega scans and the Quixel suite. So just downloading and throwing around objects in the background. Then the rest of these layers here, you can see this is my paint layer. This is adding a little bit of breaking of the silhouette, some moss, some vines hanging on the character, filling in any of the holes from where my poses weren't necessarily working. Birds are back, adding a bit of a blue haze to the whole scene. Some more atmosphere, and then a logo. So as you see, there's not a lot of actual painting. It honestly took me 15 to 20 minutes to actually go through one of these images, uh, and that's how I was able to do so many. And once I did the first one, which I think it was probably 
this one that I did first. I just rinsed and repeated that process on all the rest of them. So all these other layers that you're going to see are exactly the same. So this one to this one to this one. This one I didn't do too much on. This one I didn't do too much on. What you'll see mostly is going to be clouds. So just adjusting some of the clouds. But I think the biggest adjustment from Unreal is going to be the curves. So even things like this is even less. So the adjustment is not that big from what we're seeing. What you're really seeing here is an addition of a sky, just some photo of a, a cloud, and then some painting on the outside with some color correction layers, and that's all it is. So the renders that you get out of Unreal are pretty sweet. Uh, they're pretty easy to use. I'm sure I could be doing more out of Unreal. That's something I kind of want to work on for this next project. Uh, but yeah, this is the last character that we did. So if you're interested in this, if this is cool to you, if you like this, uh, there's a whole series on YouTube that you can go check out. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube or on Twitch, you can check it out in both places. Uh, and you can also check out the series, which is exactly what you're watching now. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, you can check that out from more or less beginning to end. So I'm excited to work on the next one. It's been a fun project so far. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to talk about what our next character is. So I'm going to go, uh, as I had said, as part of what this series would be, is showing you my process. And one of the things that I use is Trello. If you don't know what Trello is, it's basically a um, or way to organize your thoughts, way to organize notes, reference, and all that kind of stuff. So we took each of this character here. This is the artist character we did. We moved this character all the way down these blocks from inspiration and sketches through sculpting, texturing, rendering, presentation to being completed. The caregiver is one that I just wrapped up, so I'm actually going to take that and I'm going to put it in completed. So we have two of our 12 characters done. That's what we have on this left side over here. So these are the rest that we're going to do. Obviously, you can see I'm replacing my reference images, which I had before with things like, uh, you know, characters like Daniel Day-Lewis, or in this one I had things like Baymax and uh, Galio and... Um, Samwise Game G, right? All these were inspirations for this type of a character. Uh, now I'm going to do the same with some other ones. And in case you're not aware, by the title, I'm doing the Sage next. So spoiler alert, uh, this is the archetype wheel that we're using, right? So we've done the artist, which is also known as the creator. We did the caregiver, and now we're going to go around the wheel, and we're going to go into the Sage. The Sage cares mostly about knowledge, as you would expect being a sage and so we're going to jump into that and start working on some ideas some inspirations and some sketches so i'm going to find the sage which i used as uh gandalf is a really great example of what the sage is uh, as a as a theory uh the motto for the sage is that the truth will set you free the core desire is to find the truth the goal is to use intelligence and, and analysis to understand the world the biggest fear is being duped misled or ignorance uh, strategy is seeking out information and knowledge, self-reflection and understanding. Their weakness is that their study details can take forever and they never act. This is something I really want to focus on here is that the study details can take forever and never act. The talent is wisdom and intelligence. And the sage is also known as the expert, the scholar, the detective, the advisor, the thinker, the philosopher, the academic, the researcher, the thinker, the planner, the professional the mentor the teacher and the contemplative mostly what i'm focusing on here is probably going to be the scholar the expert um studying details and never acting and just being an incredibly smart character so that's what we'll be working on today and i know that there's a couple things that i want to do for this character uh that i hadn't done in previous characters so in our first one we did a character that basically had no environment and was focusing on the relationship with another character I like that quite a bit, but I don't want to pull in a second character for this. Uh, what I do want to do, and, and then I guess to go to the next one, for the second one, I focused a lot on the environment, uh, and that was really fun, and Unreal made it much easier to do that, and so I kind of want to build on that a little bit and do a little bit more in, in Unreal, and um, there's a couple things I want to do, so let's just jump straight into the sketching and the inspiration and all that stuff. So we can close this. I just knocked a cup of water over, which fortunately was empty. 
because uh, that would have gone right into my power plug. Uh, let's get a print size. I like using print, and I like just kind of rotating my image, turning it to black, so that I can then sketch. And when I sketch, sometimes I'll do it in white. So let's do that. Let's just write down some notes. So we're doing the sage. The brushes are on my other monitor. Let me get them over here. While I'm working on the sage, I'm curious in the chat if there's any favorite sages or characters that you can think of that would embody the sage. If anybody has ideas on that. Gandalf isn't necessarily a sage. But so we're doing the sage. All right, a couple things that I want to do on the sage. Um, I want to have an environment. I want to do it in Unreal Five. So U E Five. Um. One of the things that was kind of interesting about the Sage was about how they can get stuck in never acting and only doing research. And so uh, something that I had seen in uh, Alex Alvarez's, and also this, they did this in The Mandalorian and they talked about it, which I thought was interesting, was a 24-hour cycle. So uh, my, if I had to make one element out of this, what I want to try doing is a 24-hour uh, hour time lapse. And I want to have them basically... Yoda. Yoda absolutely can be one. Especially in the original trilogy. But he's also so old at that point. So I want to do a 24-hour time lapse. Which basically means I want the character to be looking at it. Right? At the thing. And at whatever research. So I want them to be like kind of surrounded in, re in research. So let's just kind of like pretend that we're sketching. This is going to be a really bad sketch. But it's mostly just for us. This is a private secret so please don't tell anybody how bad these drawings are about to be uh somebody who's like kind of huddled over a desk right and they're like writing and they've got all these tomes and they've got all this stuff around them and they're at like a desk we will say that they're at some form of a desk this is a chair that they're sitting in or something they're sitting in a chair right beautiful out of perspective chair and they're sitting here and there's just all this stuff around them. This is my initial idea, right? There's so much stuff in this room. And maybe there's, like, scrolls. And there's, like, posters. And there's, like... And posters is maybe what, like, a child would have. There's, like, an ancient painting. That's kind of up here, right? And there's all this stuff. And they're in a huge room. So there's a couple things that uh, stuck out to me. First off was there was a... I was watching Prince of Egypt. I don't know if anybody's seen, seen Prince of Egypt somewhat recently. Uh, but I watched Prince of Egypt. And it's beautiful. And there's a shot where uh, Moses is running into the temples to learn about his history. And uh, there's just these beautiful areas where it's like these really... Well, I should use the shift button. And there's these beautiful tall columns that kind of go back in, in perspective. And it kind of like frames. I'm making another image here in case you're curious. It's not the same one as the one sitting above. And it, like this is all outside. And there's like a the sun is like setting over here, I think. And it's like casting all this light. And he's very small in this area. And he's like running in. And these are casting like these really dramatic shadows. Um a really beautiful sequence and so this was one of the things where i was like "Ooh, it would be really cool to make like this type of an environment where the character could be sitting not here but they would be sitting like this way uh with their facing a wall and all this kind of stuff another thing that made that that, that uh, reminded me of this as well and so another piece of reference for myself just visual reference was fifth element the beginning of fifth element where the weird gold creature comes to uh, Aziz and his mentor. I don't know, remember the mentor's name, but uh, Aziz is like having to have this, this mirror and he's having to catch the light to bounce it off the, the sun and it's hitting a mirror and it's going into this other room 
where they're doing all this research and stuff. And so what I thought could be interesting for us was to try the 24 hour time lapse in a space where um, this person would kind of be exposed to the outdoors. So there's some sort of like a temple, there's some sort of an outdoors thing. And um, that means that they need to have two light setups, two lights. So we need to have one that's a exterior, uh, which is going to be mostly just the sun. We'll just call it the sun. And then we need to have an interior, which is when the sun goes down and it's uh, nighttime, obviously. Uh, and the sage is working because they're going to be endlessly working forever. That's kind of the idea of with this loop that I want to make is a 24 hour time lapse where the character never moves. They're huddled over their thing. They're researching. They're constantly learning and getting knowledge. But um, the world around them is continuing to move. And so the interior, uh, I want it to basically be candle lit. Candles. Looks like we've got a bunch of people joining the chat. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. We're working on the sage today. Just wrapped up our last character. And so... Uh, getting some reference going here. So I have some ideas. We're going to do Unreal 5. We're going to do an environment, uh, a kind of a, a set piece of an environment. We're going to use a, try to do a 24-hour time lapse in Unreal. And yeah, that's kind of where we're going to be going with this. I think that's a good starting point. So now the question is, you're working on a piece that isn't necessarily focusing on the character. It is about the character. And something I liked about doing the, the caregiver was that the caregiver was about the character, but it was I was able to get uh, so, so much more information. Like so much about these renders is not necessarily about the character. You know little to nothing about the character. But in the, the way I've traditionally worked, and we'll go back to any of the things in my portfolio, uh, and it can we can pick something even like a most recent project like this, where it's one render, it's it's one scene with one lighting setup with one pose. So nothing has moved in this, right? I'm just kind of using different camera angles to tell a little bit of a story. If I look at other things in my portfolio, again, even something that I did like this, this is screenshots of other people's work that I did for our Star Citizen. These are set up to tell a story, right? But all my other work is basically a single image, doing a single character, doing a single thing. And what I liked about the Caregiver series or, that I did was I got to do four or five different poses that all worked. And I got to explore four to five different lighting setups and different scenarios. And I think through that, I was able to give myself at least a, a better glimpse into who the character actually is, what they do, what the world that they live in is. And so that's what I want to continue doing is being able to see a little bit more than just the one image. Because, you know, looking, I, I think part of being an artist is being critical of yourself. And looking at my portfolio, there's a lot of characters standing in front of black backgrounds or standing in front of smoky backgrounds and not being able to see their feet, right? And that's something I want to remove is not necessarily having just even something like this that has a small set you know it's still smoke it's still basically a, a more elegant version of that so i want to do more environmental work and tell more of a story that way so how are we going to do that how do we start with that is i guess the question um when we know we're going to be doing a character it's going to be focused around the character we have to make the character but we also have to make this environment and the environment in some ways is probably going to be as much if not more of a character than the character will be but it's going to tell so much about the character that we could never do in a single image because it's just going to be hard so that's part of what this 24 hour time lapse idea is so to start i was thinking we could do a couple different things first we can either start blocking out the character and i'm going to show you what i have in zbrush for that already and how i'm probably not going to use it and then second is uh, just starting to do our block out in Maya and then starting to bring some of that into Unreal. Is the sage going to be reading or tinkering? That's a good question. Uh, I think that the sage will probably be reading. Uh, I'll show you, I'll, I'll share with you a couple goals for me in this project as well. So let's we'll just put some, some goals and put them up here. Goals. 
that's not, I was about to write the word gals, goals. Um, I want to do almost 100% Unreal. I want the time lapse to be 100% Unreal. So time lapse, time lapse, 100% UE5. Images, I'll probably still do some touch up on images. That's okay though. I like that. That basically says a hundreds. Hundred percent Unreal 5. Uh, I want to learn a little bit of control rig. Since the idea is that this character could basically be working forever, I thought it could be really, hopefully, simple to do a simple animation in Unreal. Uh, I'm sure I could animate it in, in something else and bring it in, or find maybe if there's something that exists, like a Mixamo or uh, Actor Core, there's probably uh, things that I can find and maybe I will. But just imagining, uh, I'm gonna switch the scene here, but just imagining that basically the character is looking down, uh, I'll grab a book as a thing. They're looking down, they have all this stuff in front of them and they're basically going to be looking down and, and writing and they'll be looking over at something and they'll be sketching and they'll be reading and they'll be transcribing this amazing information that they're getting, right? This, this stuff that has absorbed them so much and they'll be looking and they'll basically just be looking and writing and looking and writing and looking and writing back and forth. And um, I think that that could be a kind of the nice animation that I could probably loop over and over and over and if I can loop that over and over and over that will also uh, play into the uh, 24 hour time lapse where they basically never get up they never do anything and they basically sit there forever am I thinking of something like the lo-fi beats girl I'm not entirely sure uh, what that is AJ so feel free to post the link and I'll check it out later but I'm not sure uh, it will be more of an environmental scene than it will be like a solo scene though but I think I actually know what I I think I know what you're thinking, Just, and I think yes, I think I'm thinking something similar to what you're saying. So I want to do some simple control rig, I want to do a time lapse in Unreal, and uh, that's where we'll get started. So I have started uh, nothing of this. So we're going to start this from complete scratch today. So uh, welcome to this journey. I will show you what I have or what I was thinking about using, and this is a sculpt and a character that I ended up doing on Art Jam, um, and I initially had started this several weeks ago and was like, you know, this is the character. This is scale reference over here. Um, this is something that I thought could be interesting for a sage, or, you know, somebody who would uh, kind of be lost in their thoughts and maybe, maybe more like power hungry, but then that didn't really turn into the sage very well. Um, so I thought about reusing this head, you know, the part of the thing about doing a, all this in uh, less than a month is, uh, I'm more interested in the final outcome than I am about making every single piece of the assets, right? Every single thing that's there. So using things from Quixel is fine for me. Using Megascans is fine. Using things from 3D Scan Store is fine. All that is okay for me. So I thought about using this head that I had made, but I didn't really feel like it was kind of going in the direction of what I wanted the character to be, to be this endless researcher type. Could it be? Probably I could make it work. I could say that this is the head and that's fine, uh, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm probably gonna do a little bit of a shape block out today and uh, we're going to explore that. Uh, but I also think that I should probably just jump into Maya to start getting the scene uh, set up because I think I'm, a lot of this is going to be block outs that I'm going to send or build or bring uh, from Maya into Unreal. And uh, I think that that will be cool. I think that will be a fun process. So I'm just going to load up everything. We'll start a new screen, new scene, new scene from scratch. We'll start a new character from scratch. We'll start a new block out from scratch. And we'll get that all going. Sorry, I just got to take one moment for this till I'll get rolling and now that we're getting moving I'm also going to start my screen recorder so we can get going on this uh, in case you've never seen this stream before I like to do a little recap 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 at the beginning of every stream to uh, get people caught up 
sort of as a refresh in case they weren't able to see what I did last stream and or uh, things that I do off stream, I also put in that recap so that you can get caught up. This process or this series isn't designed to be uh, a one-to-one -one, um, tutorial of everything that you're seeing. Sorry, you're just seeing a million things pop up right now. All right, we're getting this set up. Let's get our Unreal set up. I'm going to go to my library. I'm going to launch this. But yeah, it was quite a fun project, the last one. So I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with the outcome of the caregiver. I'm happy with the outcome of the, them both, to be honest. I like this one. I'm happy with the direction that this one went. I'm happy with this one. Uh, I'm more happy with this one. But I think this is kind of the direction that I want things to go. We have our Maya open, we have our Photoshop open, we have our Camtasia open, which I don't want to start recording because last time I did uh, recording it uh, very, very quickly destroyed my internal um, hard drive space. So I'm trying to avoid doing the whole recording of that. We have that, we have this. Aha, making a new Unreal 5 scene over here. We'll make a new project. Uh, let's games I like to use just a blank scene you can use third person and things like that which is fine too uh, I'm gonna use third person uh, we'll call this the sage taste sage and we'll put this in a new folder the sage So simple scene, and again, I'm going to try to block out the scene first, um, just because I think it's going to be easier. All right, looks like I have this on my other monitor. So we do have Unreal here. I'm going to start populating this in a minute. But today, our goal is to get the, the stuff in there, to play with the environment a little bit, to explore with the character where they could be, and we'll probably bounce back and forth between Unreal, Maya, and ZBrush today to basically try to block out the lighting, the environment, the set, where things could be going, and just generally kind of see uh, what things could look like. If you got any questions, by the way, in the chat, uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to answer the best I can while we're working. Uh, so feel free. Like I said, now let's hide this. We don't need this right now. All right, so we're in Maya now. Make sure everything's all set up. I'm going to just make a quick box. Looks like my hotkeys are op working. I use hotkeys to manipulate things in case you weren't aware of that. So let's make a plane. Great, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just import a character. We will import just the basic character that I use all the time. Base man with shoes. There they are. They should be about six feet tall, or that's what I want them to be. I'm going to scale them up. You can just come in here and you can go create, measure tools. Where is it? Measure tools, distance tool. And you can snap it to the grid. You can snap it to the top of their head. And this will tell you how many. Uh, it's actually set up as, I think, centimeters by default. So what's, what is 180? Is that like a six foot tall person? Yeah. So this would make like a six foot tall person. I think it's centimeters. So just scale them up to that height roughly. Not looking for precision here. Really just looking for size, rough size. And that means now I have this plane 
I can display and show them turn off my grid. I don't need that. And I'll scale this up so it's quite large. And this will give us a nice starting plane. Now, eventually, this is going to start clipping. If you've ever had this issue in Maya, uh, that's very common. This is just where the clipping plane is starting to disappear. Uh, so we'll adjust that in a second. I'm just going to go ahead and get all my... Again, we're doing this from scratch live right now. So I'm going to make a Maya folder, and this will be my Sage 001, saving that. All we got to do to fix our clipping plane is you go into View, Camera Attribute Editor. You'll see that's over here. Now we're going to have our clip plane and our far clip plane. They're right here on the right-hand side. See how it's disappearing as I go get far away? Just need to make sure that my far clip plane has a couple extra zeros in there, and that will be fine. Now it won't disappear on us as it gets smaller. I'm going to show the uh, wireframe on this just so I can have a little bit of better sense of where it is. It's how I prefer to work. But yeah, here we go. A uh, couple quick questions already. Do I start with a camera angle? In this one, I, I want to start with a camera angle-ish, meaning I know where the character is going to be, right? I want to um, get moving on everything at once rather than just working on a character who would basically be you know, kind of looking over a thing and working on something like like this right that's not going to be a very interesting camera angle so what i want to do is kind of set up some different possible angles that could work but more i just want to look for overall scene and lighting direction and uh, this one is, i think this one is going to require kind of a more uh, holistic view uh, let's see what are the main differences between cinema 4d and maya is it personal preference maya is more heavily used in the industry as far as the animation vfx industry and gaming as well uh, cinema tends to be more used in motion uh, and titles and sequences and stuff like that. Uh, it is, both are great, uh, but it kind of depends on what you're wanting to use. If you were wanting to do personal work like this, honestly, either of them would be fine. All right. And then, oh, there we are. There's the view. All right. So I know that I want a scene. I'm going to do something very simple. It's going to look stupid. This is going to be a block out. It's intended to be dumb. It's not intended to be the most beautiful thing that we've ever seen to begin with. Also, I'm going to start figuring out potentially some materials, what stuff could look like today. So we're starting with a block out. This is going to be a column. So like I had said uh, in Photoshop, I kind of like the idea that there would be a person working over a desk. So that's one area of the scene that we're going to need to kind of figure out. And then I liked, uh, again, I've been watching Prince of Egypt, and there was something interesting in the way that these the people, I guess, you know, in Egypt, um, in time before electricity, how you would get light into certain areas. Uh, I want to play around with that because I don't, the world that I'm creating doesn't have electricity. So we'll get some big columns over here. These might be too big. They may be too small. Uh, I honestly don't know. We're going to have to figure that out. And I'm not looking for precision with all this. Uh, honestly, I'm just looking for... I'm going to duplicate this person because I want two of them. I'm just looking for an initial starting point. Uh, this is kind of a way to fix the blank page problem, which is basically when you have a blank page, how do you start? How do you start with a scene when it's all going to be about a character? You know, when you don't really know what this character is going to be about, what the, you know, what exactly what they're going to look like, but you have an idea of what you want. All right, so let's get like a nice big slab here where this person might be working on a desk. Come on. Why are you not? Oh, shift. I've been working in so many different programs recently that my... hotkey knowledge is fading. So we're going to make a simple table here. You know, we could even make it fancier and try to do something like this, but I don't know if there's really a need. Okay, cool. We got a big table. That means that the table is going to be butted up against the wall, so I'm just going to add a plane here. I'm going to snap it to this point. I'm going to scale it up huge, and I'm going to rotate it. 
Uh, I don't need all these faces down here. Rather than adjusting it, I'll just scale it from here. And we'll say this is their workspace. We'll just make it the same size because we can. There's no real reason to not. Uh, I'm then going to take a cube and I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to make it huge. I'm going to scale it down. So we're getting some weird clipping issues. That's not the geometry. It's just, you know, how things work. So right now, imagining this is an exterior exterior place. I don't know what this, this building would be, how big it would be. That's probably something I want to figure out at some point because it looks like I will... I'm just starting to play around with the camera. Right, at some point, I'm going to run into the lengths of where I can. I'm just hitting through the wall. This is intentional, what you're seeing. At some point, I'm going to hit a problem of where the camera can go, what the camera can do because of the wall. And this area back here is going to have to be filled in with something. So it could be other buildings. It could be other places. Uh, but this is the initial block that I think we're going to start with. Another thing I've been kind of looking at, let's jump into Unreal 5 real quick. Hello, Unreal. Uh, is what's going to be available to us from a materials standpoint. So obviously I could come in here and I could go and make all these materials myself. I could make everything from scratch. I could paint and texture and sculpt and do all that if I really wanted to. But I, I don't want to because I want to get this idea out. I want to create this artwork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore in the Quixel Bridge stuff that already exists. Now, I already know this because I've already done my research before here. Uh, before getting on stream, but I know that there's some really great tile work that they have in a couple of these uh, Collections, so let's go to collections. Uh, I think it was under essential Nope Environment, I think it's historic and I think I want Let's see what we have an ancient temple This is not so much tile, but you can see what I, all I would really need to do to turn one of these um, columns, which I will art direct later, into one of these is put this type of texture on it, right? And you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. And this would already be a great start. Any of these would be really great starts to go ahead and get moving on this. And it's really interesting work, whether it's trims, whether it's cool stuff. I don't know if I want the ancient temple look. Maybe I do, right? kind of exploring all these i don't want medieval village modular interior this could be interesting maybe there is some nice wood carving stuff in this area you know some of the hand posts all this kind of stuff could be really interesting elements old wallpaper like these are things that i'm looking at the floor like is the floor going to be wood is the floor going to be tile what is this space going to be like and as i'm looking through this i'm kind of just looking at it like it's a library and saying there's some of this that will really work well, right? And it can probably be a combination. Uh, my initial instinct was to bring in some of this Roman mosaic. This image is not terribly big, but you can kind of see what the patterns here are. So this stuff is interesting. Some of these mosaics are interesting. This brick, just, all this I think is cool and interesting stuff that could be quickly thrown together uh, to help assemble the scene. Uh, other things that I was exploring was, I just want to go in here and I want to search tile. And I want to search surfaces. And it looks like it was also had its own section here. So surfaces, tile, pavestone, grout, all this kind of stuff. I could pick any of these. And this is going to be a nice starting point for me. And I'm going to grab some of these and we're going to throw them in in a minute quick questions already is it okay to be in a build an environment artist portfolio using mostly quixel scans it depends on what type of work you want to do if you only want to be assembling stuff then yes there are jobs in the, out there who do similar to what i'm doing who know the library incredibly incredibly well and can make things out of it uh, so i don't think that you should avoid it completely I think it's okay to have elements of it in there, uh, which is totally fine. Uh, however, I would say it is not a good idea to say you want to be an environment artist and use only scans and then go work somewhere where they don't use any scans. And I think it's also probably a good idea to show that you can make things from scratch. 
you know, it just generally showing that you can make something from scratch, I think is a good idea. So making one thing and have it say, you know, assets used mega scans, cool. Uh, but you need to have some areas that are going to be not that so that you can make something from scratch because what if the client or the job wants you to um, use mega scans, but then they want you to custom make a section. So my opinion is use both, call out where you use both and make sure that your work that you can do uh, if you're going to bring mega scans into the equation, that it's up to the quality of a mega scan. If all of a sudden your work, you put your a focal point of your work, I'm going to show myself. If if you make the, the focal point of your work, you know, whatever a center of an environment, and then you decide to put mega scans around it, and mega scans look better than the focal point of your environment, that's a terrible idea. That now you you just shown the employer that you can't make something that can blend in with the mega scan, and that's a big problem. That's a big problem. So don't do that. Make sure your work's good enough to do that. To hold up next to a mega scan. Yes, consistency is key. Exactly. If you make them ask a question, which is, do they know that that doesn't look as good as the mega scans? That's a big problem. Already, it's a big problem. There's so many tiles in here. We're gonna have to find one real quick. I like some of these pattern floors quite a bit. Uh, I love uh, Moroccan tile. I love Middle Eastern tile of all, of all types. Uh, I've gone to Istanbul and Morocco and both of those areas have incredible tile work. And so that was one of the areas that kind of stuck out for me as far as like a place. Oh, this is interesting. There's way too many circles here. We'd have to use it as a trim, which is something we can do. But all this can also be used in Quixel Mixer. So I will be using some Quixel Mixer. Um, marble tiles. Middle Eastern floors. Look at this. <laughs> what render am I using and why? Good question. Uh, I am using Unreal 5. And why am I using Unreal 5? I'm using Unreal 5 because I feel like it's going to give us the most options for later. I want something that's like got cool shapes in it, but I don't want it to be crazy. This is interesting. So all I can do is I can come over here and I can like highest quality. Oh, I haven't signed in. All right, we'll sign in in a second. I'll, I'll let you all look at Maya real quick while I sign in. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll answer those uh, in a minute. I'll answer this question. What's the best app slash software for making 3D avatars into the metaverse and easy to use for newbies? Uh, MetaHumans is going to be the easiest. Um, but if you want to make them from scratch, there's not really going to be in the easiest uh, because you're going to have to do a lot of little uh, fixes to get something in to Unreal. And you're going to be more technical, I think, than needed. Like I'm sure Daz has some ways to do that. How do you add materials? Good question. Uh, quickly, I'm going to add some materials now. So I've just signed in. We're in Unreal. We're in Maya as well. And I'm going to grab some of these materials. So I just signed in, and I'm in the Quixel Bridge. The way I found the Quixel Bridge, in case you don't know, is you go to Content, Quixel Bridge, ta-da. And I'm going to go back to my tile. So I had searched tile, and I liked these Middle Eastern floors. And let's just grab one again. I like this one. Let's just pick this kind of pattern marble with some texture on the bottom. And I can choose this. And all I have to do is hit download. I'm at highest quality right now. I'll just go down to high quality and we'll see if I ever need to do that. Let's do high. Download. I'm also going to make a blank scene. So while this is doing its thing, you can see I now can hit add. So I downloaded it within Unreal 5's content browser, download, and now I've hit add, and now I'm going to jump into the scene. I'm going to minimize this, 
control space, you'll see that it created in my content browser a Megascans folder. Within the Megascans, it created a surface, a pattern marble, and there's the material. All I need to do is just drag and drop the material onto the floor. It looks like it is still downloading or adding or something. But there we go. Now we have our pattern floor. That is in Unreal. And we can take this and we can put this on anything. It's not all set up. I guarantee you this level is not all set up for that. But it's there. Having a weird issue. Everybody, sorry, one second. Well, my chat went away. There we are, we're back. All right, so we're gonna get this here in a minute. Does Unreal 5 have huge changes compared to Unreal 4? Yes, it does. It has some really huge changes. So the first change that you're going to notice uh, is the layout. So you can actually see here. I'll show you it full screen in a minute. But the first change you're going to see is um, it's all dark mode, right? It's more slick. It's a little easier to get around, in my opinion. And then I think the second things you're going to notice are the two big things that you're going to hear. These are not really game dev focused. They're not really virtual production focused. But the big things you're going to see are nanite and lumen nanite is the ability to bring in super high-res meshes uh, millions of polygon meshes and then uh and handle them no problem realistically uh it does take some time to import them but once they kind of come in it's processed them it i think in my last scene i had 50 to 60 million polygons and i would grab 20 million polygons and i would move them as easily as as bringing in something with 10 polygons uh, and then the second thing is going to be Lumen, which is a new lighting engine. So we're going to be playing around with that quite a bit. It uh, makes it really easy. Lumen makes it really, really easy to um, light because it, it creates new ways to uh, it creates bounce light automatically for you. You don't have to use ray tracing. So this is the default third player scene. We don't need this. We're going to get rid of this. We're not actually going to get rid of it. We're just going to go back into our content browser. We're going to make a new level. We're going to call this Sage. Sage. I'm going to go into it. It's going to ask me, do you want to save all the stuff you just did? I said no. All right, here we go. I'm going to bring up my Maya real quick. We're going to export this whole scene as an FBX. I don't need much of what's in here right now. That's all okay. Uh, again, I'm going to save this, but this is just a block out to start playing with lighting. So we're going to go select, file, export selection. I'm going to do FBX. I'm going to export the selection to my data, which is over here on my other screen. Block out. First block out. Okay. That should be done. We're going to come back in here. There's nothing in here. So we're going to do it in our content. I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call it uh, set. Yeah, set is fine. And we're going to import an asset into this folder. So I'm going to go into the Sage. I'm going to go into Un Maya, my first block out. It's going to say, do you want to make this as a nanite object? I don't really need to make it a nanite object, but I don't know why there's a reason not to at this point. Uh, and I'm just going to hit import all. It's going to check my orientation, my axis, all that fun stuff, and my scale. This is important. Make sure that your scale is set up the way that you want it to. And I will then import all. It's going to go through this. It may take a little while because I said nanite thumbs up on that. That may have been a mistake. Uh, we'll see what happens. But it shouldn't take too long because it's really just importing stuff. Oh, there we go. That's already done. So it's done. Now you see that it's imported it. Now note that in case you've never used Unreal before, any type of Unreal before, um, the outliner here changes. The outliner that's right above me is the world outliner and it's specifically there for the scene that you're in it's not the overall world outliner that you would see in something like maya so that means i need something here so i gotta drag this stuff in now i've dragged it in but it's completely black you can see that it's here you can see that the outline you can even see a, at one point you can see the outline of a character they're gone now they're gone there they are they're here but we need to get some lights in here so let's get some lights uh, I think the way that I did it last time was I created a window 
and it was like the environmental light mixer. This was a cool way to do it. If you bring this over, you can hit create skylight, create atmosphere light, create sky atmosphere, and create volumetric cloud. This is a way you can play around with all this, but what you'll notice is it also created a bunch of stuff over here on the right hand side. So it created all these elements automatically for me, uh, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, you can come in here and adjust if you want normal, how much of this information you want, meaning there's a lot more dials and knobs and things to turn and tweak. Uh, but if you don't want to, you don't have to on this, right? And so you can come down here and play around with this. I think there were some settings uh, that you can play with, but for now, I think we're going to be fine. Uh, I do want to turn on volumetric fog at some point, but we can also do that over on the right. So this is a pretty simple way to get your lighting. Now you see we actually have lights, or a light. So we can close this. I'm going to go here and I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this uh, Set. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab all this stuff and just drop it in there. That way we can turn it off and on. So now you see we have a set. We're in Unreal. And this is where Illumin is already on, for those who are probably going to ask the question. Uh, but you can notice that there's this bounce lighting. Meaning all the way in here, even though there's the black abyss of space, uh, there is still this beautiful bounce lighting that's happening right here. And that's all really coming from this one directional light. So there's only one single light in the scene. So if I come in here and I rotate this, you're going to see I'm going to get some shadows. All right, you see that there's actually even a sky in the background. So we'll get to know roughly what time it is. And as the sun goes down, the shadows get longer. But note that even, if, let's say we grab this character. I don't know if it's a separate piece or not, so, okay, cool. They're sitting in the shadow, and there's still some light on them. So Lumen, so those that, uh, that were asking about the differences between Unreal 4 and Unreal 5, uh, this is the one of the biggest differences, is that I can come in here and I can quickly, like extremely quickly, uh, set up a light and dial it in. So I'm just gonna play around. Oh, I'm playing with the skylight. I want the directional light. So we can come in here. So direct overhead light. Again, this in traditional Unreal, this area would never ever accept light, but it's also auto adjusting our exposure and you can see that now we're in this area and we can get some really cool settings so this is where things can actually happen extremely fast and what i mean by that is we can come in here i'm going to save i'm going to just hit file save all but remember when we made that mega scans and we said we wanted some surfaces and we want this pattern floor well there we go there's our pattern floor obviously it's quite large right but what you can notice i want to show something real quick is look at this wall here Right, the lighting has not changed at all. But look how there's a warm tone to this, and all of a sudden, the whole space becomes warm because the bounce light from the, the Lumen engine is recognizing that this area has a warmer tone, and it's bringing everything in here to be warmer. Let's grab another one from the content mixer. We'll pick something with a slightly cooler tone. I don't think I'll use this, but we'll go ahead and we'll download it and then we'll add it to our scene. We'll show you how that works. See, it's downloaded. I'm hitting Add. Again, I'm doing this all live, so if the stream hiccups, if there's any issues, apologies in advance for that. But uh, there's not a lot to say. I like that. Whatever I just clicked on. This is not what I'm going to use, I don't think. But I want to pick one of these shinier ones and see what that looks like, too. We'll just download this, too. As soon as the download is done, I'll add that. Kind of just looking for the second that I can move away. There we go. There they are. Looks like they're still streaming in, but let's try this one. It's a nice little kind of... This is one of the things I wanted to see. Like, See how this one has a little bit of this sheen, this light direction, has this light bounce coming in here. It's bouncing off the wall. Right, so again, the light is only coming from the top. You can see the light direction pretty much going straight down, but because there's this light, bright area here, 
it's going to bounce that. So some of these that are shinier than others are going to have more clear reflections than others. So those who are wondering, like, is Unreal 5 actually cool? The answer is yes, it is cool. It's super cool. So we can quickly throw in some things here, and this is how we can just play around with things. So I'm going to grab these. I'm not expecting these to be my final materials, just so you know. All I'm doing is just getting materials on the object so that the lighting is feeling a little bit more consistent and I can know if this is kind of the lighting that I want or kind of the lighting that I don't want. And I'm going to play around with this a lot, I think. So this is why I've started to really fall in love with Unreal uh, is because of how quick it is to get something in. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to squish this scene. Like, What if it was something where it was smaller? How does that impact the lighting in this area? How does that impact the mood? I kind of like that. But it's also going to depend on what we got going on. It could be like we could do a, a what's the architect Frank Lloyd Wright style where it's like maybe there's like you can hold down alt by the way to squish something so we could squish it there's a snap going on right now which is why the uh, scale is looking a little odd but we could try like a area that's like a smaller entryway we can also come in here and we can center the pivot we're not going to do it right now but what happens if we start blocking off some spaces? I'm a huge fan of real time stuff. I've always enjoyed game engines and working in real time, uh, mostly because of how quickly you can see something change. So you can see even here now, it's so dark in here. But the auto exposure of the camera is going to brighten it up for us. But we can get some really beautiful shots from a reflection. And again, this is also when I'm talking about my idea of being something that has a 24 hour cycle or whatever that is, you know, let's pretend, let's just move our camera here we can go slow that camera down quite a bit let's pretend that our character is working here they're working away I think I want to want to find a way to get some more lighting on them but that's okay we'll say we know that they're here let's push that back up we might want to push some of these away Or just delete them entirely. So they're working away. Let's get that directional light. And uh, we're going to rotate it. Need to go not dose overhead. There's a snap on it right now. So maybe as it kind of goes, it rotates around. Nighttime scene. We need to figure out why it's still being lit that way but we could do a whole cycle and turn the snap off there we go. do a whole cycle of day sun's passing i love that the sky changes we'll probably just keep that in and then goes to nighttime and i'll have to figure out how to do the nighttime scene that's something i want to figure out 
but then uh, coming all the way back around. So I can animate this sun uh, through sequencer, and I'll do that at some point. But you can kind of get a gist of what I'm hopefully getting to get at some point. We've got that. I think this is a good start. Um, I don't like any of these tiles as the final thing. I don't like any of these. This wall is the final thing. I don't like the placement. I would probably come in and uh, adjust the scale of these. I think I need to go into the modeling thing. I haven't done it on Unreal 5, like how you can actually center the pivot on something. So I'll probably have to figure that out. Just haven't had to. But we can also go back and uh, re-import our FBX. There shouldn't be. It looks like there was, and I should have adjusted it. There's a slight adjustment in where the location of everything is. Meaning I moved it like it should be 0, 0, 0. So when I re-import my FBX, unless I drag it in, because I dragged it in, uh, it won't be in the exact right place, but it's okay. Not super important right now. Does Unreal 5 have a huge change? Yes, we did. Let's see. Let me know if anybody else has questions from the chat. Happy to answer them. But this is the, I feel like this is a good starting point for where we're going. And again, just how fast it is. So for those that are like, why are we not using, why are we not using Maya? Even if we're going to model everything in Maya, couldn't we just render everything in Maya? Sure. Yes, you can. That's not a bad workflow. I'm not saying it's a bad workflow. But to compare what you're getting and what you're seeing and how fast we're able to do that versus the, the look that you get in here and the speed of that is, uh, I don't think it's really questionable. So that's what we're going to work on. Uh, let's get back to that sun. I'm going to close some of my windows like an idiot. So let's get those details. World outliner. Directional light. Let's get like a nice little angle in, and then let's like bring it in this way. So now we could have some cool shadows kind of coming in. This is again my my very first sketch was kind of something like this, and this was what I had taken from uh, Prince of Egypt when I was watching that. So I loved the idea of this, these columns in this large space. I do like the feeling of a more squished space but we'll have to figure out where, where we're going to go with that. Especially when a character is still pretty big. But yeah, that's where we're going to go. I like this lighting direction. Uh, we will likely need to create some backgrounds, some, some assets in the back. We're going to have to come in here, and we're going to have to populate all of this. Now, obviously, I want to make some of my own assets. I'm not, not wanting to do this completely. Um... with uh, Quixel stuff. But just to note, if you wanted to, you could come into the bridge and you could say uh, anything but you know, when you're searching 3D assets and we could start adding things in here too. So we could create food, nature, street, props. Like props is something that I probably would want to look at. So let's just grab a couple of those and see what they look like. Looks like I grabbed the wrong part there. 3D assets, props. The navigation in this is a little slow, uh, so something like I do want to do is probably, um, you know, go into another program, the, the external one and favorite things. It's just a little slow, and I think it's because it's trying to populate it or something. But I'll probably grab a bunch of these props, like this book. Here we go. Old damaged book. Perfect. I'm going to grab it as a high-quality prop. Let's download it. And let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and grab this other brown book. Download both of those. There's tons of these other ones. I'll probably take most, if not all, of these books. So we'll see what they look like real quick. But there's going to be a lot of stuff in here that I could take. Swords. This is great. Axes. Just scrolling through the props and thinking, what could be a nice addition to my scene, basically? Was the book book add 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 so now you'll see 
there's a surfaces panel right this is all those materials we dragged in and now there's a 3d assets panel so in the 3d assets all we would have to do come in here brown book and i'll grab either the material but i'll grab the actual book itself since i scaled the scene to roughly the correct size i now have it's way too fast of a camera josh i now have three nice assets of books so i can take these i can color them i'll probably retent and retexture some of them but you know I like that the gizmo like glows make some piles of books right we could undo all that and say well let's just do this way to turn off our snap Again, this is all block out. Sometimes when you block something out, it works for good. Sometimes it does not. But we're gonna make a quick Encyclopedia Britannica. In case you don't know what that is, I'm sorry. But we could have some form of like a bookshelf where we've just got loads of these. All right, this is gonna be easy dressing, all that kind of stuff is gonna be super easy for us. But for now, just go down to one. What was the original? Two? Okay. Books chairs, props, all this stuff is easy to bring in. And also the nice thing about being a 3D asset is you notice it was the right scale, but also it's going to snap to whatever I surface. So once I've got, you know, my tables or something set up, well, uh, it should be pretty easy. I am curious. I think I want to make my own table, but I'm curious if there's a table. Tabler. You can see the content browser, like I was saying, it's just kind of chugs. I'm not, I'm really not sure why it does this, but it does. So I think the ex external version is going to be a little faster. Most of these are not tables. This is cool, like an old dirty table. Whoop. I'll just take that for now. Ah, Nanite. See, we can make it a Nanite mesh. That's what I want. Download. I don't think the books had that option. I'm not entirely sure why, but they should. Like, I would love to have you know, this as a Nanite option, and I'm not, like I said, sure why. That might actually be that causes issues to move forward, because if it does, those props take up way too much room. Uh, I could see that being a problem. Uh, for the size of the, and the speed of the scene. Let's go to my local library here. I'm waiting for this table. It says it's downloaded. Or I should download it. This one says add. This one does not. Oh, it's because it's on name. There we go. Let's see if I got our table. This is all going to be temp stuff. But that's okay. You see, it's going to take a minute. Let's get it in there. Because of that glitch earlier, just so you all know, I haven't seen any comments in the chat, so I'm assuming people are chatting, but things are just not working. Apologies for that. Seems like it's loading in my mesh. This is the reality of working with Nanite. It does take a really long time, and I really honestly don't know why, but it's finally here. I mean, obviously I know why. It's calculating 
so many polygons and you can actually see that the edge here it's like well oh yeah let's go inside look at all those little imperfections that are sparkling about that is uh, polygons so this is not a low polygon mesh for this table but we can get it in here and delete our cr crappy craftsman table for a damaged craftsman And this is really just to show everybody the process of doing this, how you can do this. And kind of just also how easy it is. Because it's so simple. I want it to be a bigger table than what the size was. So I'm just using this as like a rough space. I'm going to have to adjust everything because the center is not correct. We'll go from there in a minute. But good starting point. Enjoying the lighting. Feeling like it's going to work. Going to save everything. Got some good meshes in to begin with. And now basically what we need to do is... Um, well, we kind of just need to like... Start moving on other things. More or less, right? Uh, okay, so what do we want to do? Let's. We've done. We have about forty-five minutes left in the stream, so I need to um, work on the character a little bit. Let's figure out what the character could be. Um, I have some some assets that I think would be really great. I'll show you one of those real fast from Three D Scan Store, uh, which I've been really loving. This is a. It's called a white female 60s mesh but they created some really great hands or they scanned some really fantastic hands and i thought they could be nice for this so we'll turn the texture off just because you don't really need the texture but i thought these hands could be a really interesting uh element of the character hands are really hard to sculpt i can sculpt them i've done it before but it does take uh a long time uh so i don't want to spend an entire stream basically right or many many streams uh just sculpting hands so we're going to sculpt on probably use these hands from 3d scan store uh before doing anything else i do not think i'm going to move forward with this head sculpt it's cool, I like it, but I don't think it's really going to fit the character, even though I do think these hands, let's put them in this shader, like these hands and this head sculpt could probably go to wet, go together, uh, giving a little bit of like that Voldemort vibe. I think that could be cool, but I don't know if that's really the, the angle that I want for this character to be. So we're going to have to figure out what the character is going to look like pose they're going to be like, the costume they're going to be wearing. Sorry, the headphones are crushing my ears. And then we can start getting them here in Unreal and, um, you know, really starting to figure out what this scene's going to be. First, I think I want to go into Maya and just adjust some of these. Now I'm using Maya controls. I need to get reoriented. Uh, I probably want to make a couple of these. I liked, you know, like I said before, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I don't know where my reference is from. Uh, Prince of Egypt was the one that I was looking at. So let's look at some Egyptian columns. So this is kind of what I was initially thinking. And you can see that in these, there's... okay. There's uh, lines that have breaks where they would have different types of elements. So this is cool. Nice actual way that it was constructed. I'm going to save that image for later. So the base, a shaft, a capital, the top, and an abacus, and then an architrave, I guess.
we're back, I hope. Hi, everybody. I think we're back. Uh, somebody else said this. But, uh, yeah, I think I just had too many things open. I think my screen recorder is killing my computer. So I'm probably going to have to find another way to do that. But, yeah. Hopefully everybody can see me now. Apologies on the weird tech issue that all of a sudden were, was uh, gone. Uh, but we're here. Caps lock. We're on. We're back. That's right. We're here. Um, okay, cool. So we were looking at columns. I don't know how much everybody saw, and if there was questions that were being asked, I apologize. I think, I think that tech issue was lasting for way longer than I knew. Um, so if you had any questions and you, they weren't being addressed, uh, ask them again. That's fine. I'm happy to, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, so let's continue. We're looking at columns. We're going to adjust some columns. I deleted all these. As I was doing that and all this tech issue, I was like, let's not make some columns for the rest of the day. We, can, we know how to make columns. We can use these as temp columns. And I don't need to say that word anymore in the rest of the stream. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into ZBrush. We're going to explore a little bit of this real quick. Uh, these were the assets that I was using. So let's hide those real quick. Get my pen set up. I do want there to be some form of a costume to the character. I do want there to be uh, exposed forearms, which is kind of what I was liking about this uh, arm. So I think I want to keep that. And I would like to use the 3D scan store workflow that I used before. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, and I'll probably make it a little bit more creature -y. This one obviously has like Voldemort creature style vibes. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to load up the base mesh from 3D scan store. And then we'll get started with that real quick. Uh, I think it's import. No, it's a Z tool. Z tool. So this is the base mesh that you can use uh, that 3D Scan Store provides you. The reason I'm using this, in case nobody's seen Art Jam or any of the previous streams where I kind of use this a little bit, is because uh, all of the textures that they have work for these meshes. So the character that I'm going to make is probably going to have some form of a costume that's going to cover this part of their body. So I don't care about the actual body part of their body. And then I'm probably going to take these hands. So I'm just going to, for now, let's just do the whole thing. Let's just try it. Uh, I'm going to get the scene set up. I'm going to insert the hand. There it is. It's probably going through the body. Okay, that's fine. I'm then going to insert this star. And with this star, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take a 3D scan store Z tool. Uh, I don't think I want to insert that, but I'm just going to load it. I'll show you the workflow that I'm going to do for this is going to be a, a character, um, but I'm mostly focusing on the face and the costume and the pose and what they'll be doing. So I don't really care about their body. Um, this is where base meshes and stuff like this can be really fantastic. I'm going to start with a f female mesh and we'll work our way down from that. I don't know what this character actually looks like, so we'll just start. This uh, it, file is a gig, so it's, it might take a minute. What if you build the scene in Houdini and then use Unreal, Ride for, Unreal 5 for render? Would that be beginner friendly? Uh, I don't think that Unreal 5 in general is going to be beginner friendly. So <laughs> I want to say no, just because I don't think that that's necessarily like what it's going to be easy to do, but it, that doesn't shouldn't stop you. So, all right, this has all these elements in it as well. So I want these teeth. Let's see what happens if we bring in our pen, the hand. That's way bigger. A pen, the base mesh to this. This is what I was worried about, but it's actually the right size. So let's insert that hand as you can see my goal for today is to try to crash the stream are these the same hands they're not the same they're close though they're still good all right so we're gonna get these in uh i don't really care like i said anything about that's under the body so I'm going to just take all this stuff and we're going to sculpt a new head. We're going to 
trim out some of this stuff. Probably change the pose. We will change the pose. About half an hour. We can do all this stuff. All this setup in half an hour. And get working on it. Lower this to lower resolutions. Now in my world that I'm making, this character is not a deity, is not a god. And so I have, there's 12 archetypes that we're working on and only eight of them in my world that I'm creating are part of the Pantheon and the four of them are not. So this one is not part of the Pantheon. I think that's an important thing to note, meaning, uh, you know, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to make this one also be a God. So this one would be something that was created. And, uh, in case we forgot, I'll show my art station real quick. This is the caregiver of everything, but this is the creator of everything. And so they make humans or some type of a human. And so we're, this one is gonna be humanoid at the very least, meaning the character we're making here is gonna be humanoid. All right, I'm gonna come in here. I don't need this body. I just am using it as a, a base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete some of the high res subdivisions. Anything above this is probably good to go. Geometry, delete higher. I'm gonna turn the texture off. I don't actually want the texture. I don't want there to be anything else on here. That's fine. Uh, hand, I want that. I want this. I'm gonna come in here. What I'm tr really trying to do as I'm talking to myself is um, make sure that I got it all set up so that I can delete high res subdivisions and then I can uh, save this as a file so that it's not like a 12 gig file. Dupe this over. Sub tool master. Mirror. Let's merge it into a sub tool. How did I think up the idea for these archetypes? Was there any core inspiration? Well, the archetypes themselves. Uh, meaning these ones, as it's doing its work behind the scenes, these ones are something that was created by Carl Jung. Uh, he created the idea of the archetype and created these 12 that you kind of see here. And so my idea is to take this and build a world around this. So I have some of these, which I have notes uh, and, and all this kind of stuff here about the size of what they should be, what they could be, uh, you know, some words that I wrote about how maybe they were created. I'm not going to let you read them all. You can try to screen cap and go frame by frame if you really don't read that. Um, just basically, I didn't create the idea of the archetype. I'm just using the framework of the archetype to uh, guide us along. But outside of that, as far as if you're asking about my world, um, this is why I'm trying to get part of this process done now. Uh, it was, it's kind of like, no, I don't have like a specific inspiration, I guess. It's something where I wanted something to be more an earlier world, a newer world. Something where, uh, you know, the there's not electricity, for example. There, you know, something that's a little bit more ancient in that way. Which I, it's so weird to say ancient, seeing as like electricity's not even like what two hundred years old. It's insane. So we'll be continuing on this here in a minute. We're just waiting for our ZBrush to return to us. We'll be jumping into Unreal, and what, right now what we're about to do is we're about to explore some of the poses and the character design for the character that will be here. So today, we've done all of what you see on screen. Um, and yeah. Are you thinking the character will be animated? Uh, I think the character will be animated a little bit, yes. Um, not 
to an intense degree. What I'm kind of thinking is that it will be like, um, here, I'm going to do this one. Nope, here we go. Flip flop, flip flop. Uh, basically, imagine, you know, I'm sitting here working on something and uh, I'm sketching, I'm sketching, I'm sketching, and I'm looking at something and I'm looking at reference and maybe. I don't know if this will look good on stream, but basically I'm going to look at this, I'm going to be writing it and transcribing it, and just kind of doing this over and over and over, um, as if it was somebody uh, like working and doing research and doing all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, I think that's kind of the idea that I want for the animation, and I'm hoping I'm going to play around with Unreal's control rig. Uh, Unreal 5 has a thing called control rig. You can also do it in Unreal 4, I believe, uh, but you can uh, do some simple animations. I realize now that I, uh, all that time we waited, I messed up because it went the wrong direction. So that sucks. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to go to the second to the highest. We're going to delete the highest subdivision level because I don't need, right now this hand says it's 4 million polygons. And now I realize why it took so long because there's one above that. So it's almost 5 million. That means the top resolution of this is 20 million polygons. Uh, I do not need a 20 million polygon hand. I don't even need the 4 million polygon hand. So let's delete that. And let's try our Z plugin again. Mirror. We're going to go along the Y axis. Sorry, X axis. Merge. Try again. This is going to be 2 million polygons. That's fine. Uh, is this scene on the ground floor or there will be a few stories high? Will there be any environmental elements outside the building? Great question. Uh, I was thinking above ground level. Uh, I definitely think about above ground level, and I think that there will probably be some stuff um, outside of it. It's a good question. Not sure quite yet, or yet, what that will be. Just going to clear this group up. Making some polygroups. What the polygroups are for is that I'm not really going to need this mesh. So we're just going to delete things we don't need or get prepared to delete things we don't need. This is not an essential part of the process, but I find that for me, removing unnecessary things uh, helps me a lot because now I can just focus on the things that I want. I find that, that just the, the concept of being able to focus um, is important, is really important. Oh, that's a great idea, Rob. Will there be crossover between between the archetypes? Would love to see the character, or we would, would we see the character taker walking behind the sage? I like that idea. I like that idea quite a bit. I don't know if I can make them walk. That's, I mean, I could with Mixamo and maybe some other things. Something to explore later. But yeah, I, the world itself is a is one world, uh, so there's it's definitely a a world in which they could all be seeing each other, crossing over with each other. Okay. We've got our arms, we've got our legs. Uh, let's turn off all these textures. I don't need the eyes. There's this is looking. I actually zoom in. It looks really terrifying uh, because we, there's all these other things in here. So I don't want this stuff visible right now. We're going to just now focus on this. And now that we've got this set up, I'm going to save my scene. Again, this is kind of a setup day. This is a setup from scratch, how we start our process. So I've made an Unreal folder. I've made Maya folder and a ZBrush folder. And uh, I'm just making everything from scratch basically obviously not from scratch I'm using scans and, and things like that but we're in a place where we can now start making the character we're in a place where we can play around with the environment and we're on Unreal and we can explore what that's going to start being we're in a place where we're in Maya and we can start looking around and building what the set is going to be uh, I do like the idea of it being higher than uh ground floor so let's just do a quick thing let's 
clipping planes are going nuts on me, huh? Just had to adjust some clipping plane stuff. Sometimes you know you're not going to see it for very long, and sometimes it's just really bothering me. I kind of like the idea of this being like a Mount Olympus thing, where the character would be like working here and just having this world this huge space this obviously isn't going to work in the space of the space but is meaning there would be other walls at least if this was a building right there would be other places that surrounded it so i'll have to figure that out but the idea of it being something that's kind of taller is what i like so let's save that so this is saved we've got our first sketches and ideas saved Again, our goals of this are to have uh, be in Unreal 5. That's a big piece of this. We want to create a more of an environment, and we want to do a 24-hour time lapse. And part of the time lapse is actually part of the character, uh, because a character who is the sage who often gets stuck in their research and stuck doing their thing. Um, never getting up so them kind of sitting here and looking over their work the whole time as the world passes by them is part of the goal we want to do some control rig that's pretty much all of our goals that's, this is the this is as simple as it is before I get started working I you know some of this which you can already see here right that's kind of where this initial inspiration is and we're gonna see where it takes us Yeah, and it's, I think it's so interesting when you can see this because it's like, oh, now I see why everybody's picking this up so fast and why they want to use this. Just insanely quick and how quick you can adjust things depending on what you're wanting to make. I think I want to play around with the space for sure. I'm also imagining, you know, shots that of this character could be like, you know, them working. Let's turn the light up again. You know, them, something here, and there's just like stuff on the floor, and the character's working, and it's just like this huge space with them, like books, and I'll probably download a bunch of props and stuff like that. Miguel says there's no going back. You're right, Miguel. It's so crazy, like how, just how quick it is. So, all right, what were we doing? That's right, we were in ZBrush. In case you guys don't know who Miguel is and why I'm shouting out Miguel, aside from the good comment, uh, Miguel does a stream every Friday for us, Miguel and Tran, on Voice in the Hollow, making a short film in Unreal 5. And I've already learned a lot of stuff from them in it, so... Um, you should too. Go check it out. All right, let's start blocking up this character. We've got about 15 minutes, and I think we're just going to explore some shapes. I do want it to be somewhat creaturey. There was my wife and I were talking, and she, she brought up the idea of something that could ha have owl-like features, and I really like that. It did, and that also reminded me of the owl creature in Avatar: The Last Airbender, which protects the library there. I don't know if anybody's big Avatar that last Airbender fans, but something about that was a nice callback to that as well. So let's explore what that could be. Now, obviously, I'm using a human face, but we can just kind of push this around. Eyes. Owls have big eyes. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> what? 
I love 3D so much. You just get these random, like, oh, let's just scale the... Nope. That's a Men in Black alien design right there on accident. to be bigger but I'm trying to not make it like super terrifying and creepy and I'm also trying to not destroy the middle of this mesh which is honestly the bigger problem right now I was thinking about a hood partially because I don't really want to do hair so that's to be honest, I just don't really want to do hair. And so if there's a hood, it's also a very classic thing. Like birds, like a mouth and a nose are kind of the same thing. So is it a human? And I know there are humans in this world. But like, wouldn't, this is going to look terrifying but isn't like oh god we have to get through this ugly phase in order to see what this could look like oh. I don't know if anybody's ever watched this show Monster Factory with Griffin McElroy but sometimes when I'm sculpting it used to be on Polygon sometimes when I'm sculpting I'm like I'm just making a horrifying creature on accident. This is like what a real bird would look like. Ish. As opposed to like somebody with a nose. Is it a bird, I guess, is the question. Am I making a bird? Bird-human? Bird-humanoid? Bird Monster Factory is the greatest. I love... I, I, every time I watch Monster Factory, I get just tears in my eyes la from laughing so hard at the, the ridiculous things that they make. It's so good. It's so creepy. Like, just genuinely creepy. I think that it's okay if it's more of a bird humanoid. And this weird little tongue thing that I accidentally just made. The final pan. The pebble, I think, was the one where they made the rock. There was one in Dark Souls where they made, like, Squirtle. Do I know the Chozo from guys from Metroid? Uh, not off the top of my head. Chozo Metroid. Yeah, they like bird people. Isn't that like what Rip... Is it Ripley? Is Ripley a Chozo? Isn't that like the big one? So with this, we can show all this other stuff and kind of get a sense of where it's going to go. That's not Im really important right now, honestly. It's just kind of figuring out shapes and sizes and what this is going to be or where it's going to go. Ridley? Is Ridley the one from Metroid? I always thought it was Ripley. No, it's Ridley. You're right, yeah. Is this a Chozo? I don't know. All right. I'm going to change the head shape. It's going to be in a hood. Again, like a huge portion of this is here. Something we can do is just quickly make a hood. 
So I'll bring in like a sphere. Oh, the head was invisible. Still my table. Just make it a dynamesh object. It's always an ugly part to every sculpt. It's almost always the beginning. Almost. I could sim it with dynamics and that'll probably be what I do later, but just for demonstration sake, uh, the reason I'm not caring too much about all of this is because I think that a lot of it will be hidden. So. The prosthetic makeup on Sexy Beasts is incredible. I've watched a couple episodes of Sexy Beasts, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's better than I expected it to be. I will give you that for sure. The premise of the show, I can only watch so much, though. Just, it's just hard to watch. to close this mouth. Now when I actually go to put on the textures for this character, uh, obviously, because we've changed it, dramatically uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna be like a one for one start point uh, but it, it will give us a good jumping off point and I don't think anybody's ever gonna see the back of their head I kind of like the idea of it being egg-shaped they have ears I don't know Sculpt kind of has Egyptian facial proportions too. Okay, that's good to know. So we'll work a lot more on, on the character. We only have about eight minutes left in our stream today. So as you can see, we're starting out from scratch. Uh, or from the beginning. I should stop saying from scratch. We're starting out from the beginning. And... Um, there's a lot to do. We're going to work on a lot more than what we have here. There's basically no design put into anything right now. It's just thought and its initial reference and its initial conversation and initial everything. Um, but that's okay. That's how you get started. The reason I'm changing the head shape so much is I think that I want... I don't want it to be like, oh, that's immediately human at any angle. That's the goal. So I'm going to have to play around with some of this. I don't think I'm going to go on full on feathers, but proportionally, you know, we'll play around with it more as we keep going. So we've got a good starting point. I'm going to have to put in those eyes at some point. Let's get the body in. get those arms in the 
can see that the arms don't really align with the body super well, but that's okay. Again, I think that like the body is probably gonna have, I'll just duplicate this real quick. Oh, I think I almost deleted it. Duplicate, which means I should definitely save. I'm gonna delete higher on this thing. I'm also gonna delete hidden on this thing in a second. Uh, I'm gonna hide this. I'm going to grow my selection quite a bit. So it's kind of down the middle of the forearm. And then I'm going to make this a polygroup and then I'm going to delete hidden. So I have this. What I'm going to do with this is I'm basically just going to smooth it and pull it over here. Just kind of get it to encompass the body a little bit better. There are better ways than other ways to do this. But the goal is again, this is a block out. I'm also going to delete all of this. The block out is an important step. I think it's probably one of the most important steps, to be honest, uh, because it's where you see everything. A block out is not about um, making everything look pretty. It's about getting everything in, getting everything in so you can look at it. What happened to the Unreal, anim to the Unreal Engine animation with the cave and stuff? Uh, that character is all wrapped up. Uh, if you want to check out that one, you can go to my art station, uh, which is here. This is the previous character we did. This is the newest character that I did. So you can check out that one uh, here if you want to check that out, Jimmy. The blockouts are all about just getting stuff in. So let's get some more stuff in. Let's get some of the costume in. It's going to look ugly. It's going to look bad. But you can only make something look better after it's looked bad to begin with. Uh, let's save this. Alright, save. The file is really big. I think there's a lot of high res textures in uh, the right hand side, so I'm going to have to adjust that later. Let's make a morph target here. Let's play around with this real quick. We don't do this too often, but firmness. Turn up the firmness on this. I'm gonna mask this. Let's just do a quick thing. Uh, calculate. Oh, I had the wrong part. Oh. running a simple simulation on this to kind of see where it takes the mesh. There's some interesting things happening here. Not that I want that, but I kind of want to see some of the forearm. And I'm just curious what will happen. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. I've not fully figured out how this thing works in like a proper way. I can use it to get good starting points. And often what I'll do is I'll have to mask something so, all right, now we're now we're going from here. Uh, the golem is not going to be a part of this character anymore. We have completed one of 
uh, the series. So we've actually completed uh, two characters from the series. The creator slash artist and the caregiver. So you can kind of see how unimportant the body was. It was really just something I put in there to have as a, a base for simulation and to be able to figure out where the arms could go and to kind of just get going on this. But it's not something I'm going to be sweating over for a very long time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I might go into Marvelous if I want to push this a little further, which I probably will. But this can at least... The thing I don't like about starting a design in Marvelous Designer is that... Uh, I don't know what the design is, so I'm just working with patterns, and I'm not, a, I'm not very good with patterns from scratch. So this will give me a block out for the character, and we'll be able to push this uh, much, much further from a design standpoint. And then if I want to rebuild it later, I can if that's needed so we have a starting point for our character i'm going to save this and we're going to wrap up our stream here in just a second we have a starting point for our character we have a starting point for our environment we have a starting point for our goals and our sketches and we have our starting point for our scene as well So all this stuff is what we're going to be working on in this character. This character is probably going to take us four to five weeks. That seems to be about the average for what I'm working on. So this is episode one of The Sage. If this is cool to you and you like this, like, follow, subscribe, whatever you're watching right now. And um, we'll, be, we'll be back. So this is the new time. or That's actually the same time. This is the new day uh, for this stream. So Archetype will now be every Wednesday from 10 to noon instead of every Tuesday from 10 to noon. So if you're enjoying this, come stop by, come say hi, uh, 10 to noon. And we'll uh, be doing more of this. I'll be doing more of this. This is character three of 12, so we got a lot to do. We'll be doing this for the rest of the year. Uh, we've got a bunch of cool stuff and other cool stuff coming up, so stay tuned to our Twitch, Facebook, YouTube channels, whatever one you're watching now is where you can find more of us. Uh, but if you like this, we'll be doing a lot more. Uh, all right, everybody, that's actually going to be the last of the stream today. So thank you all very much. Appreciate you all being here, and I will see you next week.